Hello and welcome to a Mac Moment. I'm Patty Tingle, your host, and this is All Things Seniors. Mac Moment is a production of PAC 14 in cooperation with Mac Incorporated. And for those of you who are not familiar with Mac Incorporated, Mac is the Area Agency on Aging for the Lower Eastern Shore. Mac services cover four counties, Dorchester County, Somerset County, Wicomico, and Worcester. And in these services, MAC is responsible to support seniors in their pursuit to live fully engaged and active lives. We like to think that MAC makes a difference, and we know we do, because numbers tell us, people tell us, and the community joins us daily in support of our seniors. So as an area agency on aging, MAC is involved in providing services like Meals on Wheels, your Senior Center activities, state health insurance counseling programs, a fitness center. We have congregate and home delivered meals as well as our senior activities. And within our facility at MAC, for those of you who may have visited, you'll see many other agencies that are involved there as well. MAC is a wonderful resource for the Wicomico County and Lower Shore area. And in bringing these resources to the Eastern Shore and the Lower Shore in particular, we hope to help seniors to age in place. And that's an expression which simply means to pursue their goal to stay at home as long as possible and to live in the place where they have familiar things, wonderful memories, and family to support them. If you're tuning in today, it's an opportunity for you to learn more about MAC, its many services, and some of the supports that are available to help you or a loved one age in place. Thank you for joining us today, and now let's turn to our show. Joining me in the studio today is Cindy Robinson. Cindy Robinson is the Communications Director for MAC Incorporated, and there's a new initiative on the rise for MAC entitled Feed the Elderly. We're going to be talking about the Feed the Elderly campaign that's coming up over the next few months, and Cindy's going to explain to us a little more about how you can become involved. So with no further ado, Cindy, welcome. Thanks for having me, Patty. Cindy, we're talking <clears throat> about the Feed the Elderly campaign, and this is not the first time Mac has undertaken this campaign. Tell us a little bit about the history. This is the third year for the Feed the Elderly campaign, and from year one we found it to be uh, very successful in that our Lower Shore neighbors are very interested in helping their elderly neighbors. Okay, so we have this title, Feed the Elderly campaign. Help us understand what it's all about. We've been in touch with our neighbors throughout the Lower Shore through a mailing. Um, these are folks who have been active at MAC, engaged in some programs, have been supporters of MAC. And we're just letting them know of the need that our senior neighbors have for food, for nutrition, so they can stay healthy, stay out of the hospital, stay in their homes. So the Feed the Elderly campaign really targets people who need those home delivered meals or takes a look at expanding upon current programs for the senior center activities where meals can be obtained but more in a uh, joint lifestyle, congregate lifestyle where people come together and can talk and socialize as well as enjoy a meal. So the Feed the Elderly campaign is a fundraising campaign to cover both initiatives Yes, it's a fundraising campaign to cover both initiatives and also to increase the awareness in the community of the need um, for food and nutri especially nutritious food for our seniors. Cindy, we refer to the expression congregate meals, but not everybody understands what that means. Explain that to us. Congregate meals are the meals that are served at the senior centers throughout the Lower Shore. Um, the senior centers uh, include the one at MAC, the MAC building in Salisbury. The other senior centers might be the Lions Club in Willards, a church in Herlock. Uh, they're throughout the Lower Shore. And it's just places where seniors congregate to have meals together. And that's so important because in addition to the food, it helps break their isolation. It gets them out of the house, gives them a chance to spend time with their peers. And is it true that the number of people who are attending the senior centers is rising? 
on the, the Lower Shore specifically, the Salisbury and the Willard Senior Center, the participation is growing, which is unique in the state. So that means that people must enjoy both the camaraderie of being at the center as well as the meals. You only have to stop in at the Mac Senior Center in Salisbury to see that. The, room, the dining room in the morning for, for breakfast or at noon for lunch or in the room for activities is full of seniors who are smiling, they're laughing, they're talking, they're engaged. They're loving what's going on there and they're coming back every day. Cindy, you mentioned the number of senior centers. I'm not sure that everybody understands where these centers are and the days of the week that these centers are open. Can you tell us a little more about the locations? Well, there are locations in Cambridge and Herlock, uh, Princess Anne and Deal Island. Let's see, there are so many. Um, Ocean City, Berlin, Pocomoke, Snow Hill, Willards and Salisbury. And the one in Willards is? In Willards, it's located at the Willards Lions Club building. And I understand the Willards Lions Club is Monday and Wednesdays, and the Max Center, which is located behind the Holly Center just off Snow Hill Road, is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yes. But no Fridays. No Fridays. Okay. And, and another thing that folks might not realize is that these senior service programs are offered free to participants which it's an amazing program and on top of that when you realize there's no charge it really is amazing. Cindy in a prior show we had Stacy Pixley here and she was talking about um, seniors and particularly seniors who live alone and uh, oftentimes withdraw from being involved in the community, isolate themselves as a result of maybe hearing loss or other issues. And we've noticed that in that isolation, there seems to be also an accompanying symptoms of malnutrition. How does, how does this program hope to impact that? Malnutrition can really be a problem for seniors. They're living alone. Um, when sometimes they're very isolated. They have no family support. Um, they may be widowed. Um, they have no friends left. They get depressed. Maybe they're physically unable to prepare a meal. So they're not eating nutritiously, and that leads to mal can lead to malnutrition. Malnutrition can cause uh, can re lead to many other um, physical issues, mm -hmm. uh, muscle loss for one thing. You need a good nutritious diet to help maintain muscle. Um, and when people aren't eating nutritious food, they're more likely to have um, more likely to be admitted to the hospital. Mm -hmm or nursing home admission. Um, another good part about the meals program, especially the Meals on Wheels program, talking about the isolation, is that when the driver delivers the meals, mm -hmm. um, that's a, a human contact for that person during the day to help break that isolation and let them know that they are cared about, you know, lifts their spirits. But it, and it's also a safety check because that driver does not leave the meal on the front steps. The whole, one of the parts of Meals on Wheels is that they make the eye contact, they make the personal contact. Um, so the senior doesn't feel as alone. They feel like there's someone who cares, someone who's brought the, them a meal and a smile for that day. It's, it's interesting that we tend to sometimes think of food as the cure-all. And we think about the Italian families and the and the mothers who create the big meals and always come in and eat. But it seems with our fast-paced lifestyle that we've got going today, you know, we're moving at such a pace that the traditional family meals have become almost something of the past. And then when uh, people age and as a result of uh, family changes and the empty nest or uh, family dynamics shifting, uh, we have people who are now 65 plus, either living alone or living a less active lifestyle. And that food or that meal doesn't seem to take on the importance of the day for the family communication. It's now, I'll just get a little something and sit down and maybe watch TV while I eat half a sandwich or, um, don't think about fruit or how some of those vegetables are really going to help me stay healthy. 
and by staying healthy, I'm not inclined to perhaps fall as often, and I can get more active in my own home, my own community, with my church, and yet we don't make these connections where food was once such a valuable part of our family communication and our connections, now it's, it's just something that has become less and less important. I know that you've experienced in your caregiving role some issues around healthy meals for your loved ones. Um, what words of advice do you have for caregivers? Mealtime, I remember growing up, mealtime was so social. I mean, it was a time to sit around the table and interact with family and friends. And as you said, in today's fast-paced lifestyle, that's less and less possible. Um, you know, as a, a, my husband and I are both caregivers for my elderly mom, and we found it extremely important that she has that good, nutritious meal every day. And one thing that we have found to be invaluable is Meals on Wheels, because we do know that it's a healthy meal. Um, there's a the little bit of the social aspect when um, the, the driver brings the meal. Um, but it's also, there's, there's so many facets to caregiving and to know that meal is taken care of. Um, at least, you know, one good nutritious meal and then every little bit helps. There's so many other things that you want to do when you're caregiving for a relative. You know, you just like to be able to sit down and play cards for a couple hours. Um, and having a meal ready gives you more time to be able to, to sit and enjoy things that you know your loved one would also enjoy. Um, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's so hard. In today's society where most people work, it can be a real challenge to find time to prepare a healthy meal. And that's where um, MAC Services is just so invaluable to help provide that meal. You make a valid point in that sometimes, you know, we want to do as much as we possibly can, but time escapes us, and we have the obligations of our own families. We have the obligations of supporting our families through our jobs, and now we have the additional obligation of an extra home, the maintenance of an extra home, and then worrying about that loved one who may be at home alone and how we can keep them comfortable keep them well fed and nourished uh, and attend to their needs as well. So it's, it's an extra concern or an extra worry that the Meals on Wheels program can help lighten that load. How does a person find out about the Meals on Wheels program? You can find out more about the Meals on Wheels program by calling MAC at 410-742-0505 and ask to speak with Linda Hearn. So when a person calls MAC, and they speak with Linda, what type of information will they be asked to provide? The Meals on Wheels program is not based on financial eligibility. Um, the Meals on Wheels program is intended for folks who have some physical issues that prevent them from preparing a meal at home. It might be an issue of they're not able to get to a grocery store, there's no transportation, uh, they might have a physical um, disability or, or illness at the time where they cannot stand at a stove and prepare food. But it's intended to help those people who are just physically not able for one reason or another to provide themselves with a nutritious meal. When we make the call and we go through the process, and sometimes there's a home visit involved, um, we want to also remind our viewers that this is not once you enroll in the Meals on Wheels program, it's forever and always. It can be a short-term sort of opportunity, a matter of a few weeks or a few months. It doesn't have to be somebody who needs meal deliveries across the years, but it could be somebody who needs meal delivery from across the years. So it, it's a combination. Do I have that right? Yes. Well, one example of short-term meals on wheels might be when someone is discharged from the hospital. And as they're growing stronger, they just need a little bit of help, and Meals on Wheels can provide that little extra help. I know when we talk about people being discharged from the hospital, oftentimes, you know, when we're going through that discharge process, there's just lots and lots of instructions and here's some new medications that you may not be familiar with and here's some side effects. So it's more important during that phase to stay nourished so that we understand maybe what those side effects of new medications are doing and it's not 
the side effects of malnutrition. So Meals on Wheels and the nutrition program at MAC really does play a valuable role for many seniors. Tell us, what has been the feedback that you've gotten for the Meals on Wheels program? The comments I've gotten from Meals on Wheels recipient, recipients, it's just amazing. Um, people tell us that they, they don't feel lonely anymore because they have that person that comes to their door and, and will leave them a smile along with the meal. They will tell us that um, before Meals on Wheels, they, all they had to eat in a day's time was a sandwich. I mean, they couldn't prepare much more. They couldn't afford anything more. Um, they tell us it was often a choice between medications and buying food. So it's not people who just want someone, they don't want to, they don't want to prepare a meal. It's not that. It's people who really need it um, in many different circumstances. And um, sometimes the comments are as simple as, I need Meals on Wheels to live. So, so Mac is busy preparing meals, is busy delivering meals. Uh, I understand that you don't, Mac doesn't do this by themselves, that volunteers get involved in delivering meals. Uh, yes, the, um, we have a lot of folks who will come out and volunteer and help us with delivering meals. Um, one wonderful example is the Rotary Club of Salisbury. For it's, it's been, I believe they're in their 15th year, of they handle one meal route for us. And the club members take turns. And it's, that's been a wonderful experience from them, for them from comments I've heard about. the. Um, it's, it's been an eye-opener to what some of our senior neighbors um, are faced with. But it also gives them a really, um, also gives them a, a deep feeling of satisfaction that they can help their senior neighbors. Now, MAC partners in order to get meals into homes. And in Somerset County, they partner with the Somerset Commission on Aging. In Worcester, it's the Worcester Commission on Aging. And in Dorchester, it's Delmarva Community Services. So we were talking earlier, uh, there was a phenomenal number attached to the number of meals delivered last year. How many meals did MAC deliver last year? Last year, MAC delivered nearly 80,000 meals throughout the Lower Shore. And that's delivering to a person at home throughout the year. Yes, 80,000 times. So 80,000 visits, 80,000 smiles. Well, let's talk a little bit about the senior centers because people come together uh, to talk and have a good time at the senior centers and they share a meal there. How many meals were provided through your senior centers? Through the senior centers, 45,000 meals last year. And that's at a network of 11 senior centers throughout the Lower Shore. And that, that's just an amazing number. And we can tell that MAC is making such an impact to the community and helping people to stay active and engaged. MAC doesn't do this alone. I understand aside from volunteers and some of the partner agencies, you get support from other organizations like um, United Way. Uh, how does that make a difference for MAC? MAC could not provide the number of programs it provides without the support from the United Way. The United Way provides us with huge financial support. Um, for example, the Meals on Wheels funding in the last three years has remained um, level, which means the funding is not increasing, but at the same time, the production costs, the food costs, the transportation costs have all gone up. So without funding like United Way, I, I'm not sure how those services would be able to stay at the same level they're at. So I, as an employee, giving to United Way through my payroll deduction, help MAC to continue to sustain services when the funding that may be coming from other sources has not increased across time. So I understand too that um, our county executive Bob Culver has challenged the county employees. Can you tell us a little bit about that challenge? The county employees have been wonderful and Mr. Culver as well. Um, they recently made a nice donation to MAC. They've been holding casual days um, for several months, um, a casual day every week, and employees have paid to participate in that. They um, have also had donut days, uh, and Mr. Culver auctioned off his parking space for a month to raise money for it. So it's, you know, it's, it's and it's not only that they've helped to raise funds to support our program, but again, it's raising awareness among the county employees of the needs of our neighbors and how Matt can help them, but we need their help to help our neighbors. So Max Feed, the elderly campaign, 
kicks off when? March 1st. So March 1st until? The end of May, which yeah. is Older Americans Month. Okay, so for three months, MAC has undertaken this initiative to try to generate dollars to help feed the elderly. And in this campaign, it's not just intended that donations should come in through the letters that you'll be mailing out to supporters, but anyone who has an interest can also support the program. Who should they contact if they want to support the Feed the Elderly campaign? Please contact me, um, Cindy Robinson, and the number at MAC again is 410-742-0505, and just ask for me, Cindy Robinson. So we know that there can be lots of creative ideas to help generate dollars to support the Feed the Elderly campaign. Um, over the years, you've done your mailings, you've done special events throughout the year, but one of the most noted was something connected to a retirement. Um, so anything goes when it comes to helping feed the elderly in our community. The community has an idea that they'd love to share with us on how we can help make this campaign successful. We would love to hear from you. Cindy, we've talked about the program. We've talked about the Feed the Elderly campaign and the Meals on Wheels program. If you had a wish today, what would be your wish for your Feed the Elderly campaign for 2018? My biggest wish that we could raise enough money that Mac would not have to worry about where the money is coming from to feed these folks. It's food, nutritious food is such a basic need. It is something that our seniors should not have to worry about. And I would love for Mac not have to worry about how to provide that for them. Okay. Thank you, Cindy, and thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me here today, Patty. You've joined the Mac Moment. We've been talking about the Feed the Elderly campaign. If you'd like to learn more about the Feed the Elderly campaign, contact Cindy Robinson at 410-742-0505. I'm Patty Tingle, your host. Thank you so much for joining us at a Mac Moment. And to all of our friends throughout the Eastern Shore community, have a wonderful day and eat that nutritious meal. Hello, I'm Patty Tingle, host of the Mac Moment. Mac Moment is a special program of Mac Incorporated, the area agency on aging serving the lower four counties of the Eastern Shore of Maryland. If you would like to learn more about the services of Mac Incorporated and the many opportunities available to learn more about an active lifestyle, engaging in programs, or simply have a question about how to address planning for later in life, Contact Mac at 410-742-0505 or visit our website at www.macinc.org.